In this video, we're going to look to put together a flow and have a button get added to the opportunity. So when it is clicked, it will look at the, the type, the stage, and the lead source, and it will populate a custom pick list or drop down or HTML select tag that the user can can set. So let's go back to our setup. We know we have the object that we created and now we need to create a flow. So we're on flows and I've got an existing flow that I'd like to reuse so I don't have to start it from scratch. I'm going to click Save As. I'm going to say New Flow. And actually we'll do the name here. And we can change this to Opportunities. And we'll click Save. Alright. Now I have my brand new flow, which is based on an existing flow, but I need to tweak it. So we're going to start, and one of the most important things that I've learned in building this flow is that to get data into the flow that is that it's being basically sent, you have to use this record ID. So this is a unique global variable or parameter that Salesforce has created and it allows us to pass in from the object, in this case it won't be an account object, it's going to be an opportunity, it allows us to pass in from the opportunity that you're on the actual ID. So now here we just lost it, so we'll do ID. We want the opportunity ID. It has to equal something. And this is a global record ID. Basically, I can be on an opportunity. I can be on an account. I can be on a quote. I can be on a case. When I have this here, it knows to pass it in based on what you're on. So that's a big hidden, maybe, if you want to consider that. My searching found that that's the way you're going to want to do it. Otherwise, your flow won't fire. It doesn't know what to work with. And for purposes of what I'm trying to do, for the pick list to be filtered correctly, it needs to know that it's on this particular opportunity ID and then pluck the values up from that opportunity ID to then set the drop-down choices. Okay, so that's plus one for the learning here. So we're going to do this as a get. Now what, what's, what is this returning? Let's talk about that a little bit. Well, at this point, this is going to return all the values that are in this opportunity record. You can you can sort them. You can you know, you can get all records now for an individual record ID on an opportunity. There should only be one record returned, but you could get all records. You can automatically store all the fields now. Really, I don't know if we need to do that in this case because I'm only looking for three particular fields. So what could I do? I could say instead of giving me the entire opportunity record and all of its fields, let's just do some basics. 
So let's go and look for that type and let's look for back to the the Excel, the type, the stage, the lead source. So basically we're more or less saying that the pick list value is going to be just one of these. Now we can we can dupe these up and add more rows so there's more than one pick list value returned. But for this example, it's we're going to just have one value returned, which kind of pointless from a pick list perspective, but you could, we could copy this row, insert it, and that way you'll get two choices to come through. Now, if we wanted to update the object, we can. We'll do that in a second. So for this field, we want lead. Let's see what lead, lead source. Okay, let's add another field and let's add that type. So let's search for type, opportunity type. And as our last one, and I know the order doesn't matter here, it's, what's our last one here? Stage. So stage name. So this is really nifty, this is cool. It's basically querying the opportunity object and its schema, and it's giving us back what fields are available in it. I'm using lead source, type, and stage name. Don't need to return any other values. It wouldn't make sense to have the entire opportunity and all of its values get returned, because at the end of the day, it's, it's just too much more, it's more data than you need. So we'll just do this. We'll have those three come through and we'll click done. So now I've got a query with basically is under the hood, a SQL query that's going and saying, okay, for this ID, return me these three fields. That's it. Now I chose to do an assignment and you don't necessarily have to do that, but I'm, I'm going to do that and I'm going to, assign fields to variables. It's not a requirement, I don't believe. I think you can go straight, straight to, let me get rid of this. You can go straight to the next query, the subquery, but for all intents and purposes, I'd like to kind of change this up a little bit. And I want to use variables because I want to see the values in the debugger. That's one thing I, I found by using variables. It's also allowing me to, to do manipulation or other things if I wanted to, if I wanted to with the variable, but I don't believe you have to declare variables here. So, but I'm going to, so I'm going to go new resource. And for this resource, I'm going to do a variable and I'm going to give it an API name of lead source and the data type is just text. Okay, and I don't need it to be available for input or for output. This is staying within this flow. So this flow variable is going to be there. Now I want to assign to that though, the value coming from the query above, the step before it. So that's going to be the get opportunity. And I need to pull in from there, the lead source. Now I've taken from the query result and passed it into a variable to be used. I'm going to repeat this now for the next two. And we're going to do a variable again. You could argue it could be a constant. So this is opportunity type. Again, we'll do text equals, and this is going to have to be again from the opportunity. So we'll do get primary object, and this is going to be, I think it's type opportunity type. There it is. So the autocomplete is super great and the, the, the real live querying of things is really a very nice feature.
So we're going to do a variable last one. And this is going to be our stage. Again, not necessary to do this because you have access to them in the next query. But I want to show some things for purposes of debugging and it just it gives me the opportunity to reuse this if I wanted to. It also is shorter to read. This is shorter to read than all of this, which tends to get crushed. So we're going to go here again, and we're going to get it from the query up above, and we are going to do the stage. Yeah. Okay. So what I've done with this assignment is I've basically taken the values returned from the first query and I'm passing them in to variables. So the values are coming into the variables. You don't have to do this. I chose to do it. So the first query goes and gets the primary object in this case, which is the opportunity. Probably should rephrase this but let's see if that messes stuff up. Let's, instead of get primary object data, let's call it get opportunity data. Okay, and that still remains as is, and that's that gotcha that you wanna have, that you wanna understand. The only way you're getting the ID off the object you're on is by using this exact syntax, record ID. So now let's take a look at this and see if that got updated. Yep, that's very nice of them. They automatically updated it for us, so great. But now we need to reach back into the database and we need to go to the custom object. And we want to return the pick list value or values that should come based on the combination of the lead source, the opportunity type, and the stage. So that's what we're going to do with this second query. So your first query gets this, and then your second query reaches back and goes after the lookup table. Now there's no way to join these tables. That's something that unless you created that, then you could have a more complex query. And I don't know if Flow Builder wants to support that. So right here, we're looking at SFDC test, we want to pull from our new Salesforce opportunity lookup table. So let's do that. That wiped us out here because we're talking about different fields and we're talking about different things. So here we're going to say, okay, well, what's in your lookup table? And I'll scroll this because a lot of this is custom generated from Salesforce but we want to look for our custom fields. So here's lead source. That's our custom field. And that's going to equal our variable lead source. Now, could I do the whole thing that I did before, which is get? Yes, I could do that. And then I could do the lead. And you could say, well, that's probably the way you should do it because again, everybody has different approaches. Is it a best practice? Is it not a best practice? It depends on the constraints that you're trying to fit it into. Are you going to reuse those variables at a different point? Is it easier to document and read for someone else? A lot of thought goes into how someone writes their quote unquote code. And this is a no code, low code world. But this is fundamentally, again, an assignment that's happening here. We're saying with this SQL query, select from this table where this equals this value, this equals that value. So it depends on, on, on I think, some preference, but it should also depend on the team's standards. And at this time, I'm doing this video for myself. So my standard is I want to declare variables and put those values in there because number one, I don't know if I'm going to reuse those variables. Number two, it's easier to view these variables and walk it all back for myself. But this comes down to your team. So we've got now the type 
and we've got a custom field as type and now I'm just gonna do type and we've got variables here for that and the last one lead type and I think it was stage so there's our custom column custom field and here's our variable so for me lead to lead type to type stage to stage keeping it simple all right let's see if there's anything else we want to modify here we don't want it to be only the first record right this is a pick list so if there's more than one record we want all records to come up and other than that we could choose the fields that we want in which case really do you want anything other than the pick list to be returned but in this case we'll just have everything ideal state it's just the pick list and that would be this pick list value C it's the only thing you want from your lookup table because that's the only thing that should be populating the dropdown but I'm also going to show some other things here so I won't put that one in I'm gonna say get them all so we'll just get rid of this and automatically store all fields okay so we're gonna get at most whatever the number of rows returned times four that's what you're looking at because you've got four fields in this okay so now there's our second query now we can go to the screens and in the screen we are basically saying look I want to return some values and guess what I want to pre-populate some things so I want to show that I'm getting data now we're not doing industry that's from the account one so I'm gonna change this to our uh, lead I think it was lead source okay so do that you do that and you don't want this to come from that variable which is from the account I want this to come from my variable lead source so that's really it this is gonna pull now from the variable in the workflow which is coming from that query now I could mix this up I could say you know what I don't want it coming from the lookup I want it coming from the actual object so let's do that and instead of saying okay get this well, actually this would be correct but I want to retype it again so we're gonna say get and there's get opportunity data and now we're gonna say type and there's opportunity type so in a way as soon as I change that get query it actually already cascaded some things down but we don't have an SLA that we're using so let's go and now change this over to stage and let's not pull from our workflow variables let's actually get it from the query the first query so we'll do our get again and we'll do stage and there it is so here we've got an opportunity to reuse our variable if we wanted to go back to the original query and pull the data from there again and it gives you flexibility performance I'm not sure about what that means so from a performance perspective to me all of these are still in memory the query has already run but I'm not sure under the hood what this is doing hopefully it's not doing another query but again I'm not positive I, have, I haven't dug into the depths of what that could be now here's our pick lists and so we've already got that set up our data type is text and what we want to do is we want to be able to say okay users multiple options in this case we're gonna say no and we're gonna say all right well what is the choice here what's now you can manually add the choices but we we built a lookup table 
So we want to get away from manual lists. That's not going to scale when something else happens. An update, for example, to the list. So we want to have this be a pick list that gets generated as the HTML. But the real key is what are we doing with this collection set? How are we going to populate the values? So that's where this comes from. All right. So this is basically a collection of pick list values. So let's let's go ahead and get rid of this. Search the record. Let's see what we get. Okay. So this is giving us some choices, not many, but it's basically saying, look, if you want to get these values from this, then we're going to do that. And that's why that gets populated that way. Now, the question is, okay, let's get rid of this. And we'll get rid of this. So what are the values coming from? If we're using the query up here as our collection, and collection is basically rows. Think of it like Excel, it's row after row after row. A collection is a object in memory that has rows to it. That's generally a definition of a collection at a very high level. I'm sure someone's going to disagree with that, but it's a storage container that contains more than one row of data. An array can also be a collection of a sort, but this is going to be more database principled. So think of the collection here as a list of rows coming from a database table. Now, do we want all those rows? Do we? What do we want to have come out to the dropdown? So in HTML, you can have the text appear. And underneath the hood in HTML, you have a value attribute. A lot of times, the value is an ID. Why? Because when you go back into the database, you want to be able to rename something and not have things break if you stored the text. So when you do a lookup table, one of the columns should be an auto type column, auto number, a unique ID, or a unique GUID. It doesn't matter. Something unique for each row. That way, if the other fields in the row change, that ID, that identifier, that remains constant. And you can store that in the database and not have anything happen negatively. So for purposes of this, the label, we want to be the text for sure, because we want the user to know, OK, here's the text of this. And that should really be that pick list value C. When we look at the choice value, now you have that conversation you need to have, which is, OK, what do we traditionally do for databases? Should we have it be the ID or should it be the text again or something else? So if you really want to be true to database principles and normalization, then what you're going to want to do is use what the ID value column would be. Now you have to say, well, OK, if I look at my list here, what I've got IDs and I can even filter by ID. But they're returning things that is that's not what you want. You say, well, the record ID, that's that's what I want. That's the ID coming off of the object. That's the not the ID in the table. Let's take a look at this. So this is a little bit of an intriguing thing that Salesforce has done. It's you know, it's their architecture. Basically, if we go here and we do a lookup and we go to the opportunity lookup table, what you're going to see here and it's going to give me the lightning doesn't want to display it. No, there it is. OK. What you're going to see here is this is kind of the ID column. Why? They're all unique. 
these are the values that came and yeah you could say well each permutation makes it unique well yes except I started to do some dupes even that it's not going to be kept track of that way this column here this is effectively your ID column now but it's not named that way it doesn't have to be and what's funny enough is they actually use the name the name of it to say that's that's the ID so yep that's giving you a unique ID over and over and over again different IDs for every row so you're gonna want to use this value you don't have to you don't have to but if you wanted to be able to say okay well if I want to change the types to some other text and I still want to be able to have uh, the, or if I want to change the pick list values from go to going and gone and something like that then you change it here and because these are already related in existing records you don't have to worry about that being broken because the value that is stored underneath the hood in the database is this value so going back to our pick list we're not going to use ID we're going to use this right here name and you see how it's lookup SFDC opportunity that equates to this column name it is intriguing and it, you could consider this a GUID of sorts and that's how things get uniquely identified in Salesforce right so there's our choice of value we want to store that in the database but when the text is represented from the pick list perspective then we want just that text so we're going to click done here and we've required it now these we could look to make read only although I'm not sure if there is a read only there's got to be a way to do read only I just don't know if I know it yet so you don't have to show these custom logic yeah so there's got to be a way to do read only on this I'm just not sure what it is for purposes of this example you probably would hide that and you don't even need these but I want to see the data coming up I want to look maybe I'm doing this for testing right now maybe that's all I'm doing it for it's just testing okay so for testing purposes I just want to see these things right so here we've got some pick lists we've got some things not sure if it's gonna work yet but we're gonna give it a shot our last screen is in effect the finalization of everything so let's say you've got the user that's done the pick list and they've chosen a value but that value now is going to drive something in another system and that's what this message box is really gearing towards that generate document is a link which passes dynamically the the choice as well as the ID from the prior step into another solution and then that solution parses that query string and says okay you want to do this you want to do this that's what we're gonna do for you now are there other ways of doing that for sure but for purposes of Salesforce and lightning this appears to be an acceptable approach your mileage may vary certainly you can change things I did put the previous in and the finish in finish to close the modal you can close it over here previous to bring you back if you didn't like your choice it'd be nice to be able to script it and close it after the generate document link is fired maybe there's a way to do that with this custom call script not sure I haven't delved into that so that's our final screen there's really nothing else but let's double check our link just to see if something would be bad if we didn't get that set up correctly so let's take a look at the link okay there it is and if you see here so with this URL which is pretty long I am passing in that record ID and that record ID is going to equate to a custom parameter I've created for the opportunity ID so this is this is setting up 
the ability to pass from Salesforce to another system via query string, not always the best approach, but it's definitely something that's still used today all over the place. And it's going to pass that ID back to this opportunity. Now what's going to happen on the other side of the, with the other system? Yeah, I'm going to pl pluck that down and I'm going to do some stuff. It's probably for another video. But for now, this is how I'm dynamically passing when the user here in Salesforce clicks it, it's going to pop it and go to another system. And that other system is going to go and, and use that value for something. Okay, so we've got a lot going on here. Two queries, a little bit of variable assignments that really aren't necessary, but I like to do it that way. I am going to save this. Now I'd like to debug it first. I'd like to see what is going on. So let's see if I can get to an opportunity here. And let's see, this is, yep. So I've got an opportunity. I need the ID. So I'm gonna grab this from my query string. I'm gonna go now back to my flow. And I'm gonna click debug. And if you recall with that first query, the record ID, it's looking for that. This is how I'm able to test this. And now I pass that in, I make sure there's no extra spaces, etc. And I click run. Now this could fail, I haven't tested it yet. But it looks pretty good. So the lead source we knew is coming from our variable, but the opportunity type is coming off of that query. And the closed one status is coming off that query. And let's see, there it is, only one choice. But that's because my Excel has only one choice. So if I go to web new customer closed one, I go to web new customer closed one, I just added that row. So if I re-upload this data, which I'll do next, then we're going to see go, no go. But right now where the data is, it should only show go. All right. So we're going to head back into our Salesforce, this is this is looking okay. Now let's see if I can click my next and what happens. Okay, and now if I hover over my link and I look at the bottom, which is really crazy and it doesn't show me everything, the ID is now part of the URL. So if I click this, it should take me to the next. So when I click finish, I'm just done with this. What I like about the debugger here is, okay, so we started off and the record ID got passed in. The successfully found records is wonderful, but it doesn't tell me the values. But now when I did the assignment, that's where I'm able to say, okay, what did you get? Oh, look, you got new customer, you got web, you got closed one. And I'm not sure this is totally required, but for debugging, this was an easy way for me to see the values that came through. And this doesn't let me crack what got returned, which is a bit of a bummer. So I did the assignment, so I said, oh, there it is. And now I can do the next get records, which is go ahead and send this stuff in. And as you can see, since I used the variables, the values come with. So now I know my SOCL query here is using web, new customer, and closed one. And then it's returning the pickless value that I want to get plucked out of there. Or in this case, I think I had to return everything. So now again, you get successfully found records. So here now we're going to get our screen and our screen has the values on there. Okay. And then our next screen actually has that with the hot link, which is kind of fun. Good stuff. So for debugging purposes, maybe you do the assignments first. And if you want, you can nuke them. But this is the way I found I can get the values out and I can look at them. You say, well, that's kind of stupid. You're doing it for debugging. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe not. Okay, so that's a successful test of this. Let's activate this. So now we've got our flow. Now we need to get a button on the actual opportunity screen. So that's not going to happen through the flow builder.
but it will happen back on the setup by going to the opportunity and there's other ways of doing this I mean there's there's lots of different ways but I'm gonna go to the opportunity object I am gonna go to buttons links and actions and I'm gonna do a new action now something I learned from testing this if you do a button you have to build the URL right and you also apparently don't have an opportunity to turn it into a modal meaning a pop-up it takes you to the whole form so I preferred the action in this instance but you certainly can use a button the other thing I liked about the action is it by default says hey we'll let you call a flow well that's super cool and let's see there it is there's my flow now you say well how do you get that out how do you, that's that record ID the value does not need to come from anything except the record ID the system knows what to do so you've got your standard label type we can leave that as default or you can play around that's entirely up to you and the label here I'm gonna say open opportunity flow action and then it gives its its name you can play around with your icons whatever you wish that's all there is to doing an action for this and I thought that was pretty nice pretty simple so I went with that again this is all research from the web telling me these different pieces of the puzzle that I'm putting together and I'll, I can put links to other websites that I used to, to put this together in the description. Okay, so this is great. We just had the action get finalized. We certainly could edit it, but there's really nothing we need to do about that. So we just now need to put it on our page. So let's go back to our object manager opportunity and what we should see now on page layout is the ability to find this new open flow and it's got to go under your quick actions uh, or is it under mobile and lightning actions it's under mobile and lightning actions sorry open opportunity flow let's drag this let's go ahead and drop it right here and then we can save this okay great now if we head back to an opportunity just right here let's take a look over here and, and the page layout here can always change you can you can do a lot of different things with that too we now have a new open opportunity flow action so let's click that that runs our flow in the background we get our values and there is our choice and now we can click next but let's go ahead and let's see more than one choice from there so let's go ahead and we can close out of this let's go back to setup and let's actually do that search for our lookup for the opportunities and let's make sure our Excel was saved because we put that extra that extra row in there so let's go ahead and import and we want to just go ahead and update existing records or we want to add new records because we want to add that new one we can do matches we can leave it I'm just gonna leave everything as default here I'm not gonna really think about this I'm gonna go ahead and choose my file and there it is again and I'm gonna say next and it looks like it's got everything mapped correctly start the import 
Okay. So that's it. And this is your confirmation if things made it, if things didn't make it. Right. So now records process were 46. Let's go ahead and take a look at our data now. Well, let's see if it botched it or if it did what we wanted it to do. Okay. Now I can't get a full count here, but I'll just go down. So it looks like we duped ourselves up a little bit by putting in everything. So it didn't actually sniff it out and say, hey, this is the only changes. It just added everything else in. So here's our two, though, that we were talking about. So now I think we're going to get a couple values in here. So this will be good just to see. Let's take a look. So we'll go ahead and we'll refresh here just to make sure page is active. And we're going to go here to our open opportunity flow action. And sure enough, there's your dupe that came in, the two goes, and there's your new no-go. So it worked. The data came in. We got some extra things. But you can see here now you can control your dropdown via what is being put in the lookup. And I think that's super cool. And then however we wanted to, we can, we can use this. I did not put something in here to send it back to the database to do an update statement or an insert. In this case, it'd be an update because you already have an existing opportunity ID that you're working off of. If it was a brand new record and this was tied to that, then you're going to want to do an insert. So the flow is a little deficient in that regard, but if I pass the value of the pick list in the query string, and it depends on your use case, then I have the value I need. Maybe I don't want to save it back in Salesforce. In this case, I do. And so I would, I'm going to need to update my flow to add another, basically update query step in there, populate it with the values I want and just have it push the data back into the database. But this has been a really neat learning opportunity for me to see how Salesforce with the new, I guess, approach with Lightning and Flows, because Flows is sort of new, to be able to just build a basic, basic, basic modal out of the box with very little code involved. I still think it's important to understand what you're doing because that's fundamentally they've just wrapped layers and layers on top of what you'd have to do if you had to write this code by hand but pretty neat pretty simple I'd like to be able to style it a lot different I'd like to be able to add other functionality that I know with HTML and CSS and JavaScript maybe that's in a future roadmap for this also, I think, and this is something I need to head into, is Lightning Web Components. Instead of relying on these things this way, I hope I have greater control with Lightning Web Components. I've read that you do, I just haven't gotten into them enough. So this is kind of stock out of the box if you wanted to stick with Salesforce at a basic level using a flow using the actions button and seeing the results of it still very nice from what you used to have to do back in the day but I would like to even control it more that's just me but if this works for you super cool and that's that's it so thanks for listening I hope this was helpful